worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God, as you are coming in, family. We are going to begin to worship the Father. Let's just exalt Him. Just begin to speak words of adoration. Hallelujah. We need a mighty move of God in this room tonight. We need a greater release of His glory upon us tonight. Hallelujah. We need more of His peace. We need more of His joy. We need healing and restoration to break forth. We need people who have been in stagnated places to be moved into places of a celebration. Tonight, family, let us stand on business. Hallelujah. Let us stand on kingdom business and worship the Lord like we don't have anything else to do with our lives. Hallelujah. Let us worship the Lord like we're grateful that he woke us up this morning. Let us worship the Lord like he is our beginning and our end. Let us worship the Lord as if he's our everything because he is your everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're standing on business today. Hallelujah. Kingdom business. Thank you, Jesus. If you if you know your heavenly language or if you already have it, go ahead and just speak. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, whatever the music moves you to do. Just begin to speak. Don't worry about the comments hallelujah just set your eyes on god hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah what a mighty god we serve we serve what a mighty god Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God that we serve. That we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve, we serve, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, we serve, we serve. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve, hallelujah. What a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. That we serve, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you are mighty. You are mighty. What mighty God, what mighty God. That we serve, that we serve, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, that we serve, that we serve, hallelujah. He's releasing glory. His presence is in this room. God is already here. Hallelujah. His presence is in this room. Hallelujah. God's already here. 
He's releasing glory. Harandi Arabase. He's releasing power. Hallelujah. Let his presence fill your space. Let his presence fill your space. Let the Lord fill your room. Let the Lord fill your soul. Hallelujah. Let the Lord fill the room. Let the Lord fill your soul. Fill your soul. Hallelujah. Let the Lord. Fill the room wherever you are, hallelujah. Wherever you are, let his presence fill the room. Let his presence fill the room wherever you are. Wherever you are, let his presence fill the room. Let his presence fill the room. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Pour out on us. God, pour out. On us, pour out on us, pour out on us, fresh oil, hallelujah, fresh oil, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Excuse me, hallelujah, Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we glorify, God, we magnify your name, pour out fresh oil, pour out fresh oil, hallelujah, pour it out on us, oh Jesus, pour it out on us. Fresh oil. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And as his presence comes in, just acknowledge him, God, you're good. Hallelujah. Father, you are mighty. God, you are our everything. Without you, O oh Lord, who would we be? Where would we be? What would we be? Hallelujah. Without you, God, there is no us. Hallelujah. Without your light, oh God, we are in darkness. Father, we're thankful for the light, the treasure that you have stored within us on this day, oh God. Hallelujah. To just shine brightly before your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Horandi Arabasi, fill us up, oh Lord. Hallelujah. King of glory, King of glory, how we magnify you. King of glory, how we worship you. Hallelujah. There is none above you. There is none above you. You are the only God. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness towards us. Hallelujah. We're thankful for your mercies, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Through this worship, bring forth healing. Let your healing power, Lord, flow through this room. 
Let your healing power flow into this room. Let your healing power flow through this room. Let your healing power flow through this room. Let your healing power flow through this room. Flow. Flow. Jesus. Flow. Let your healing power in this room in this room let your healing power Lord flow through this room hallelujah Flow through this room. Flow. Hallelujah. Flow, Lord. Pour out fresh oil. Renew and restore. Lift those heavy spirits. Lift. Those heavy spirits pour out fresh oil, make our souls renewed. May we be restored, hallelujah. May we be restored. We need a healing, we need a healing. We need a healing from you. We need a healing. We need a healing. We need a healing, Lord, from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your presence. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the newfound surrender in this moment. Hallelujah. May they release every bit of baggage, whatever it is that they've been carrying. Hallelujah. The yokes and bondages of oppression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May it begin to fall off today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let your healing power Fill this room, hallelujah. Let your healing power fill this room. Let your healing power fill this room. Let your healing power. Feel this room, feel, 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 feel this.
this wound feel feel this wound Lord let your healing power feel this wound feel this wound Every sickness must go, every bondage must break, when we're in your presence, when we're in your presence, may the healing go forth, hallelujah, may the healing go forth. healing go forth. Thank you, Jesus. May the healing go forth. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We give you glory. 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 Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence. Hallelujah for the shift that's taking place in the room. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for only doing that which you can do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Make room. Make room. Make room. He's coming. To you, make room, make room, make room. God is coming to you, make room. is coming to you hallelujah make room make room make room God is coming to you God is coming to you Make room for his presence. Make room for his peace. Make room for his joy. Make room for his glory. Make room for the King of kings and Lord of lords.
you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Release your glory. Release your glory. Release your glory. In this place, release your glory. Release your glory, let it fall on me, let it fall on me, let your glory fall. Let it fall on me. Let it fall on me, let your glory fall, let your glory fall, fall down on me, fall down on me, let your glory fall. Let your glory fall, let it fall, fall down on me, let your glory fall, let your glory fall, let your glory fall down on me Glory fall down, 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 down. Let your glory fall down. Let your glory fall down. Glory fall down as you see drips of oil down, down. fall down on us, O oh Lord. Jesus, 
pour out that fresh oil, Lord. Hallelujah. Down. Fall down. Fall down. In the spirit, a lot of you right now should be drenched in oil. Hallelujah, you should be drenched in oil. What a pour. What a pour by God's Holy Spirit. What a pour. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, my Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this encounter tonight. Father, I thank you for the worship that has gone forth. And I thank you, Father, for the revelatory teaching that you are bringing forward today. God, I pray, O oh Lord, that it stirs up the apostolic anointing in your children. Father, I pray that it brings forth clarity and insight, but also, O oh God, that it places such a seed within them that causes them to seek. Hallelujah. May the seeds planted in them today through this teaching and through this worship May it cause them to seek deeper. Hallelujah. May it cause them to seek deeper. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that today's encounter encapsulates them in your presence, in your goodness, in your glory, in your favor, in your mercy, O oh God. And may greater grace be poured out upon those, O oh Lord, who have continued to hammer the nail in the ground, building the foundation, O oh God, that you have given them to build. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray for a peace that surpasses all understanding in their mind, in their hearts, O oh God. For those people, O oh Lord, who have real life situations going on. Father, I pray that you open up their ears and their hearts even more to receive what you are planting in them today, O oh God. Father, I pray for all of us, O oh Lord, that our ears and our hearts be open to receive. Father, for soils that for people's soil who is not cultivated, that is not cultivated, oh God, by your great grace and mercy, Lord, may you begin to cultivate their soil so that they can receive the richness of this word, the richness of this worship, oh God, that you have brought forth and that you are bringing forth before them on this day, oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory. Oh, we give, we give, we give. What a merciful God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. What a merciful God. What a splendid God you are You are, you are What a splendid God What a merciful God What a loving God you are What a loving God, you are hallelujah. We bow before you, hallelujah. We worship and adore you, hallelujah. What a mighty God, he shan the under passi, Rodia Basayandi, your Roshi Basayo Yanda Pai Londi Hallelujah, we serve you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you, God. You're amazing, God. You're amazing, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey family, what's up? Welcome into um what was been 30 minutes. Dang, we've been worshiping for a long time. Hallelujah. All right, you guys. So tonight's teaching is titled 
calling on Nehemiah's. Okay. So I need to turn my, uh, I need to change my theme music because it's about to go off in like 30 minutes and we got way more time than that. Excuse me. Yeah, I'll be drinking a lot of water. That was not the instrument I was looking for. Hallelujah. Y'all just give me a second. I got to get my, um, my background, my thingy music. Y'all know how we go. Hallelujah. And so I'm super excited for tonight's teaching. Amen. And so, um, I'm really going to be going off of my notes. All right. So, um, this is calling on Nehemiah's. All right. And, um, so as a teacher, I always mention this. I'm a teacher at heart. So for my note takers, tonight is going to be really easy for you. Okay. I mean, you, you still will have a lot of notes to take, but I kind of want to give you guys an overview of what we're going to be talking about. Um, so first things first is, I, I don't know, how, I, I should have probably put this separately, but first things first that we're going to talk about is um, understanding Nehemiah's call. Okay, so the first point that we're going to be making is understanding Nehemiah's call. All right. And then the next thing is going to be understanding the assignment. All right. And then the last thing that we're going to discuss today is the essential lessons from Nehemiah. Amen. And so tonight, what will happen is a lot of you all will begin to, as I speak about Nehemiah and the wisdom the Lord imparted upon me and I imparted upon you, you're going to gain understanding about your assignment. Hallelujah. A lot of you, your eyes will be open. Amen. I pray for God to release a grace upon you to build that wisdom which he has called you to build. But more importantly, that that apostolic that has been placed in some of you, that it gets activated tonight. I pray that it gets turned on such in fire that some of you probably spend the night beginning to write down the blueprint that God releases to you. Hallelujah. Some of you, that's actually what's going to happen. So again, just to give you guys an overview because it's teacher at heart. Okay. Is that, um, and honestly, you know, I, I, I want to talk about something before understanding Nehemiah's call, but I don't know what to call it. Okay. The Lord is telling me to title this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the power of your name. Hallelujah. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the power of your name. So we're going to study the name of Nehemiah. How does his name align to his call? Boom. And then we're going to talk about understanding Nehemiah's call. That's the best like that needed its own title. And then we're going to talk about understanding the assignment. And then we're going to go over the essential lessons. And so now a lot of you know that um, this right here is for you. This is for your journey. This is for your project, whatever God has you building. This is for your wall. And so with that, I do have some questions that are going to come at the end of each section. Okay. Um, and so those you may want to write down um or just rewatch it all right so let's just go ahead and get right into it we already prayed and so um all right so first the power of your name let's talk about this and so when we look at the name nehemiah nehemiah literally means comforter okay it literally means god is my comfort or comforter and so when we study scripture in second corinthians 1 3 through 4 it tells us that god is the god of all comfort and so as god comforts you or comforts us in our afflictions then we in turn are able to comfort other people and so what does that mean i used to read that scripture a lot of different times and not understand what it means and so what that scripture is saying is is that when you are going through hardship the father will comfort you and then in turn you will comfort others in the same way that god has comforted you so for example 
Some people have gone through a moving situation similar to me. So the way in which the father has comforted me through wisdom, through revelation, I then am able to pour that out to you all and bring you comfort in the same way the father has comforted me. Amen. And so when we begin to study the power of your name, it's so important that you know your name. Hallelujah. And so I know I've mentioned this before and I don't and I'm very careful when I mention this because I don't want people to seek out your spiritual name without seeking a relationship with God first. And so I have to tell you all, unless your parents were like this with God, a lot of you have been named names. That is not the name God calls you in heaven. Amen. And so some of you, the Lord has probably revealed your call, but also some of you, he's probably revealed your name. All right. And so this only comes by relationship. You can ask God, of course, and God may reveal it to you. But one thing that I learned is when you get closer in intimacy with the Lord, he reveals your name. Now, your name is not anybody else's business. The name that God calls you is nobody else's business. Maybe your spiritual leaders, if God leads you to say it. But for those of you whose parents may not have been, you know, in cahoots with the Lord when they uh, gave birth to you and they just named you anything, the Lord has a name for you in heaven. Hallelujah. And he will reveal to you that name. And so for those people who are saying, Sunray, how do I know my name, etc., etc., I want you all to know that God reveals it as you build a relationship with him. Do not feel like you're missing out on anything. Because again, the Lord may reveal your call before he reveals your name because your name is connected to your call. Does that make sense? And so your name is so important. That's why when you study in scripture, whenever you're studying something, always study the name first, because the name always gives you a powerful revelation of what that person was called on earth to do. Your name determines your destiny. Somebody needs to write that. Your name determines your destiny. And so I know a lot of you tonight may be sending up prayers to God. And I pray that he answers you concerning your name. Hallelujah. And so, um, again, your, your, your name in heaven is really between you and God. It's not for everybody to know because it does reveal your call. OK, it reveals a lot about your destiny. And so sometimes God will let you tell people like, hey, God said my heavenly name, Elijah. OK, you could tell everybody, Elijah, you a fiery prophet. You got this mantle on your life. Right. But um, yeah, I just want to say that. And so Nehemiah's name reveals his spiritual assignment. OK, and so Nehemiah's name, meaning God comforts. Nehemiah was called to comfort God's people after a period of separation due to disobedience. OK, and so how does one comfort? Typically, if you want to feel comforted, you get like a blanket, a hug, but also you can find comfort and protection. And so when we look at how Nehemiah's name mean, meaning comforter, how does it connect to his assignment? Well, his assignment was to comfort God, his assignment to comfort God's people dealt with a healing and restoration of an open wound. OK, so what I want you guys to envision, we all talk about Nehemiah and the wall, but instead of envisioning it as a wall, envision it as a big old wound. OK, you know how you get like a huge cut. Just imagine it as a huge gash. Right. Just blood everywhere. Right. That's what this that's what this wall, this broken down wall represented. And so. Comfort is not just taking a bend. If, if it's a huge gash, if it's like a little scratch, you could put a bandaid on it. But what God called Nehemiah to do, he couldn't just put a bandaid on it. God couldn't just take Nehemiah and put a bandaid over that. What needed to happen was a deeper work, a deeper healing and a deeper restoration. So when you study the wall and Nehemiah's wall, whatever the case may be, look at it as a huge gash or a huge separation. We're going to speak later about what the wall represents, but I really just want you guys to understand that there's power in your name, just as there's power in Nehemiah's name in determining his assignment. Okay. And so 
What was the open wound of Israel? It was the destruction of the gates and the wall. Okay. And so why or how Sunray does the gate and wall being destroyed deal with comfort? Well, it's the equivalent to me right now walking up to your house and removing your door, removing your screen door, removing your lock and telling you to go to sleep. Are you going to go night night if I done took off your front and back door and I took off all your windows? Are, are you going to go night night? No, you're going to be like, girl, what is you doing? I'm not safe. I'm not comfortable. Right. You're not comfortable in a place where you are not protected. And so what does a wall do for a city? It protects them. What did the wall represent? It represented the presence of God. And so because the wall was destroyed, there was no presence of God amongst the people. The wall had deeper significance. Again, we're going to talk about it a little bit later. But do you understand how Nehemiah's name meaning comfort and then him having this burden on his heart, which we're going to talk about later, to build this wall was based on restoring comfort. The wall needed to be there to bring forth comfort. Because again, if I come to your house and I take off your doors and I take off your windows, you're not going to feel very comfortable. You're going to be on edge all night, right? Because you're not safe. And so God needed Nehemiah to rebuild the wall, to heal that open wound, to bring in God's comfort for his people. God could not come in and comfort his people without that boundary being established, without that level of consecration being established, without that, 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 um, that level of intimacy being established. Amen. And so as long as this wall was broken down, so was the relationship between God and his people. What was the end result? No comfort. Okay. And so Nehemiah's name was his assignment. He was created to bring forth comfort for the people. And we got to think. These people were cast away because of disobedience. They were just returning to their land. And so his assignment was on multiple levels. The, the level of comfort God needed him to provide was through restoration. Was through building a relationship. Amen. Because by him bringing them back to God, by him bringing in that relationship, by him building that wall, that wall represented mending a relationship with the Lord after a long period of disobedience. And so how does Nehemiah's name meaning comfort and him building this wall to bring forth comfort? How does it relate to you? Well, when the Lord begins to reveal to you your name, you will find your wall. Each of us have a wall to build. It may not be a physical wall. It may be that you have a youth mentorship group. And through this youth mentorship group, what you're doing is you're going in and you're building a connection of the little ones with the Lord, but also maybe those who don't have a father. Maybe those whose parents are incarcerated. You're creating a wall. You're building something that the Lord can inhabit. The whole purpose of building the wall was for a place for God to inhabit. Again, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but your name is connected to your destiny. And that's why it's so important that you do know the call on your life. Otherwise, you're just going to be doing a whole lot of whatever. God causes all things to work together for your good. So I'm not telling y'all that you need to know, but I'm telling you why it's important to know. Hopefully that makes sense. And so first, that's the first point I want to make is that there is power in your name. And when the Lord reveals to you your name, you can break it down. For example, some of you in heaven, God may call you David. You're like, God calls me David. And so the thing about your life as a David is that you recognize that you've always been ostracized, but you've been ostracized and you've been set apart to be a worshiper unto the Lord. That you've been set apart to build, to be a, uh, not just a worshiper, but to be a warrior for the Lord. That you've been set apart to have strategies that other people may not necessarily have. And so however the Lord, because you can be David in the marketplace, you could be David in the church, 
You could be David in, I don't know, the music industry, whatever the case may be. But the Lord has given you something to build as a David. And so as you study the life of David, you're learning from him how you can better do your assignment. Prayerfully, that makes sense. And so the only way you get revelation is you have to study that person. I could tell you everything about David. But you yourself have to study it because whatever burden God places on your heart, you will begin to see that burden turn into a blueprint as you read the story of the person God says you are in the spirit. Okay, or similar to. Amen. So that's the first point. There's power in your name. Your name determines your destiny. Boom. So now let's talk about um, understanding Nehemiah's call. All right, so the first thing about understanding Nehemiah's call that I want to speak about today is a heart of servanthood. A heart of servanthood. So when we study Nehemiah, he was already a cup bearer for the king. And so how does a heart of servanthood relate to understanding Nehemiah's call? Well, when God calls you, it's not about you It's about who he's calling you to. I did a teaching on this and it was about Nehemiah. It is the first. If you go to the Bible study playlist, it's going to be the first Bible study there. It's called Understanding the Gift. That is actually a really good teaching too. I would watch that if I were you. But the whole point about what I'm saying here is that whenever there's a cry of God's people, he raises up a deliverer. There was a cry from the Israelites with the oppression of the Egyptians. God raised up Moses. There was a cry concerning the the edict or the, the decree that Haman pushed out. So God raised up Esther. There was a cry for leadership. Do y'all see anytime there's a cry, even too with the Midianites, right? With Gideon, God raised up Gideon. Anytime there's a cry, God raises up a deliverer. And this is why it's important for you to understand that what cry you're called to is not the same cry Sunray is uh, called to. Because your baby is different from my baby. I can hear your baby crying and I don't know the difference between it wanting milk or it wanting to go to sleep. I don't understand. But my baby, I know my baby. I, I understand the cry. Hey, that's the cry of a little girl who needs to understand what it means to be kept. That's the cry of a student that needs that has the brains, but they don't have the access to the right resources to get them into college. Oh, that's the cry of a woman that's been battered and abused, but she's hiding behind makeup. Oh, that's the cry of a student that needs not just more provision, but that also needs a male mentor in their life. Oh, that's the cry of someone. Do you understand how they're is a cry that you are called to everybody has their own cry so he raises up deliverers to respond to a cry and so the reason why it's so important to have a heart of servanthood is because your call is not about you your call is bigger than you it's bigger than you That's why everybody tells you one lesson you will learn as you are following God is that it's not about you Many times he'll tell you, I don't like, it's not about you. (laughs) And so when we study Nehemiah, he was already a servant because he would carry the cup to the king and see his, his job. He put his life on the line. You see, when God calls you to something, you have to put your life on the line. God doesn't bring forth, God doesn't call a hiring, hireling, I meant. What is a hireling? It's somebody you pay to do the job, but as soon as harm comes or evil or something comes up against it, they running away. You see, you can't be a hireling. You got to be a shepherd. You got to be like David. When the, the lions and the bears come to take the sheep, you're fighting against it in the name of the Lord. And if I lose my life, I lose my life. What did Esther say? If I die, I die. 
If I perish, I perish. And so that's how you know you have been raised up to be a deliverer because you have the heart of a servant. You're like, God, if I die, I die. If the enemy comes up against me for posting this video, so be it. Because these are the people that I am called to. Hallelujah. And so God uses your life situations and circumstances to create in you a servant's heart. Everything that you've been going through, it has been to create you as a servant. Scripture tells us in Matthew, uh, Matthew 23, 11, that the greatest among you is the one that can be a servant. You see, a servant can be trusted with great authority and responsibility. God is not going to put the care of other people in your hands if you are self-serving. You can't be self-serving. You have to be one that serves others. Hallelujah. That's not to say you don't care about yourself. But what it is, is, is that you, you know how to take care of yourself. But also, more importantly, you understand that even you taking care of yourself is connected to other people. Even you going to go get your nails done and self-care, all of that, getting the massage. It is really to help you be a better vessel for other people. And so when we understand Nehemiah's call, another thing about him having a heart of servanthood is that this is why God placed a great burden on his heart. In Nehemiah 2 and 12, I'm going to pull up the scriptures because I wasn't going to read the scriptures. I was just going to have y'all do it, but I, I, I guess I'll go ahead and do it. Nehemiah let me go to it. Genesis, here we go. Nehemiah 2. So if we read Nehemiah 2 and 12, it says, Then I arose in the night, and I and a few men with me, and I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. And so what we see here is that God places great burdens on the hearts of those who are servants. If you are not a servant, God is not going to put a burden on your heart to do anything because you don't care about nobody beyond yourself. Okay. And then there are some of you that have great burdens on your heart, but maybe you have unforgiveness. You have all those other things that you need to work out character traits that you need to begin working on so that the Lord can begin to release the blueprint for the burden. Somebody say that you need a blueprint for the burden. So many of you are carrying the burden but forget there's a blueprint in that burden for you because that burden is not meant to be a burden forever. And so let's talk about it. So the first thing we just talked about was a heart of servanthood. Second thing, carrying the burden. OK, so God gives each of us burdens to carry. I could really go into deeper detail with this, but I'll just say this. The mantle on your life is a burden. You wear a mantle on your shoulders. That's what it was. It was a cloak for your shoulders. When you go to the doctor and they've been and they analyze you for stress, most of the time they're going to check your shoulders. Why? Because of stress and anxiety, majority of humans carry a lot of stress in their neck and shoulders. Why is that? Because spiritually, what happens is your mantle determines the burdens that you face in life. Your mantles determine the burdens you face in life. Everything that you're going through is shaping you up to fit the mantle. The mantle doesn't come to fit you. You yourself must change to fit the mantle. You yourself must shift to be the Nehemiah. You yourself must shift to be the Esther. You yourself must shift to be the Joseph. It's a work that you have to do. The mantle is the mantle. The call is the call. It's you that has to rise up to fit the mantle. It's you that have to rise up to pick up the phone and answer the call. That's not a conference call, by the way. That's why everybody can't be in your business concerning your call on your life. It ain't it was no conference call when the Lord called me. I don't know about y'all, but that's why you can't have everybody speaking in your ear about a call that came specifically to you. I mean, some of y'all might have had a conference call, maybe the monitoring spirits, but even them, they need to go do something else about their business. Continuing on. And so God gives each of us burdens to carry. Right. And so that's that call that we're called to that cry. And so when we read Nehemiah 1, 4 through 11, this was when he prayed. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he says, 
As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continue fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Sunray, how do I know what burden I'm called to? First of all, the burden is directly correlated to the call on your life. Second, the burden will bring you a spiritual grief. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I used to read this and be like, why was bro crying over a wall? Who cares? But. That's how you know that was Nehemiah's burden and not mine. Because I'm looking at it like, bro, why are you crying over a wall? But now I know the spiritual significance behind the wall. But at first I'm like, bro, really? Why are you crying over a wall? But when you think about it, hallelujah, this is what a burden does. It causes you to go through fasting and prayer. Like some of you have burdens for wives, like to help other women become wives. The rest of us could care less about praying through the midnight hour about marriage. But there are some of you, the burden is so strong. You can't help but weep. You can't help but cry. Some of you, it comes with children that are being molested and sex trafficked. Other people, it's not to say we don't care about it. It's just not a burden God placed on our hearts. So you're passionately praying. You're passionately fasting and weeping and mourning before God for a solution. Because that's the burden that's on your heart. So the burden will move you to a place of intercession. Okay. But also remember, your burden has to have a blueprint. I'm not saying as soon as you recognize the burden, God gives you a a blueprint. But the thing is, is that you can't keep carrying a burden with no understanding. God has to release to you the blueprint, even if it's a small piece of it. And so what do I mean by that? Again, Nehemiah 2.12, it says, I told no one what God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. So he heard it. He cried and he wept and he fasted and he prayed. And the Lord placed something on his heart to do. So that tells me that every single one of you that says, Sunray, I've been carrying this, but I've been carrying it. If you seek deeper, if you fast, you pray, if you seek the Lord, there is a revealing of a blueprint. There's a revealing of a blueprint. So the burden will cause a solution to be formed in your heart. It will cause a, a solution to be formed in your heart. There's a lot of people that's talking about the burdens of of children not having access to certain education, but they have no solution. If you don't have no solution, if you don't have no blueprint, you're just a person that's just talking. You're just making noise, but you're not making any change. So let's go over the first few questions of reflection. And I'm going to repeat these like three times for you guys to write them down. So these are questions that are going to help you understand your call. First things first, do you know your spiritual name? So for my note takers, put spiritual name question mark. (laughs) Do you know the call on your life? It's okay if you don't know the spiritual name, but do you know the call on your life? Spend time describing this in detail because you're going to want to be able to go back and look at this. Okay. Some of you may only know a small piece. That's okay. God reveals in pieces, but you still want to have it written down. So I'm going to repeat it again. First question of reflection. Do you know your spiritual name? Do you know the call on your life? Spend time describing this in detail. Second thing. How has your life prepared you to serve in the capacity of your call. How has your life prepared you to serve in the capacity of your call? I'm going to say that again because this is a lot. How has your life prepared you to serve in the capacity of your call? Because what you will notice is that When you look over your life and you look at it from a perspective of, okay, Lord, 
My life has been preparing me to be a servant. It makes it easier for you to understand the people you're called to serve. For example, I know God has it on my life to talk to a multitude of people, okay, because of the experiences I've been through in my life. For example, I have a strong background in teaching and tutoring, so I'm used to dealing with people from all age groups. So that in itself has helped me to be able to speak to people no matter how old they are. The Lord, I was I was a homosexual. I was gay. <laughs> I ain't gay no more. I'm delivered. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just always think that's so funny. Not to offend nobody, but the Lord delivered me from gayness. Okay. And so I know at some point God's going to have me speak about that. Right. Um, and so in that case, I can help people when the church persecutes them for being gay and help them understand that it's a process. Amen. That God delivers you from the same as smoking weed. OK, I wasn't no stoner, but baby, I was more than a loner. I'm just kidding. I just wanted to rhyme. But even with that. OK, do you guys get it? The experiences that I went through in life is has catered to the people God will help me serve because I can speak to people. I can understand certain things and it's not going to come with judgment because, baby, I was once there right there with you. Now, I wasn't no drinker, but I used to still drink at times. You know what I mean? And so those things in my life, me being adopted, OK? has per- me being adopted it helps me to help other people understand yo your blood not really your family <laughs> you learn to embrace strangers you learn to embrace um like at a young age i came into the world having to embrace some random people as my family okay so you get what i'm saying all of these different things So understanding your call. All right, guys, let's go to the next one. Understanding the assignment. So what did the wall symbolize? So when we look at a wall, a wall represents protection and defense, but it also brings comfort. Okay, so without the wall, God's people were open to shame, reproach and attack. So what the wall outwardly expressed. So Pay attention. This was a wall that Nehemiah was building. But do you guys understand that the wall was an external reflection of the burden God had Nehemiah carrying in his heart? Hear me. The wall was an external reflection or an external manifestation of the burden God had placed in his heart. The wall was an external manifestation or an external reflection of the burden God had placed in his heart. So there's something again between the burden and blueprint. There's a burden that's placed on your heart that God gives you a blueprint that then becomes actualized into the wall, that then becomes actualized into the ministry, that then becomes actualized into the business, that then becomes actualized into the nonprofit program. Whatever it is, that thing is an actualization, is a manifestation of the burden God has placed within you. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to explain it again because somebody says they're confused. So think about it this way. When you carry a baby, right, that baby is a burden on the inside of you, right? And nobody going to care for your baby like you care for your baby, right? Boom. But when you give birth to that baby, that baby is now on the outside of you. Okay, and so now that that baby is on the outside of you, it is a external reflection or it is a manifestation of the burden you were carrying on the inside. 
Does that make sense? And so how does that correlate to Nehemiah? Nehemiah's baby was this wall. Okay. The Lord had put the blueprint in him to create this wall. Right. And so when he began building the wall, that baby went from being on the inside to being on the outside. So the burden, the baby now became the wall, now became the baby on the outside. Does that make sense? So the burden was given birth or he gave birth to the burden. Does that make sense? I think that should make it easier for those people to understand. So people that did not get it, do you get it now? I don't know what it is about y'all and babies, but y'all get it. Okay, good. And so, um, we know that this wall was a representation of that burden then that he put on his heart. If you're still confused, you're just going to have to rewatch. Okay. Um, cause I just explained it like three different ways. And so, um, and also too, some of y'all have to, uh, process. I understand that some of y'all are processing learners. So some of y'all actually have to like slow the video down and continue on. So just try and grab what you can now. And then when you get back on later, you can slow it down and think. It's a whole lot of different type of thinkers on here. I'm sorry that I can't cater to every single one of y'all, but I'm trying my best. Amen. And so, um, so we remember the reason why this wall was such a burden on Nehemiah was because the Lord wanted to build something that his presence could comfort his people through, right? Because the Lord needed a boundary established. The wall represented their, them being consecrated to the Lord. So what the wall would represent in our lives is us actually having a devoted relationship to God. You see, what happens is, is that we can notice some people's lives where they don't pray, they don't worship, they don't spend any time with God, right? And so when you come to them, they're devoid of the presence of God. You don't feel his glory. They pray. You don't feel his presence. But then there are those that have become a fortified tower in the Lord, that have built such a wall, that have built such a level of consecration in God that when they pray, you feel God's presence, that when they worship, you feel God's presence. And so you begin to get comforted from that. So I'm going backwards. I'm scaffolding a little bit to help people understand why this was such a burden on Nehemiah. His name meant comforter. And so he wanted people to be comforted by God, but to be comforted by God, you have to be in God. That's just the equivalent to the people in the world. When when you're around somebody that's been in God's presence, oh, they can release a glory so strong. Look, I can release a glory so strong on you that you begin to feel God's peace and comfort. But in a few hours or in a few days, it kind of goes away, right? Because you have to build your own wall. We each have to build our own wall of intimacy with the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard. So continuing on with what the wall symbolizes, this is understanding the assignment. So the wall being abandoned also represented a people who deserted their relationship with God. And thus God's protection and presence was no longer there. Okay. Thus, God's protection and presence was no longer there. When we read Zechariah 2 and 5, I love this scripture. This is my one of my favorite scriptures. My favorite scripture. That ain't a word, but we're going to make it a word tonight. Zechariah 2 and 5. I have to read this scripture. And so it says, For I say of the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in the midst of her. So if there is no wall, the wall of fire of the Lord can't be there. And so if the glory of God must rest upon this fiery wall, this ring of fire, 
then that also means the glory of the Lord was not with the people. And how can I tell you the glory of the Lord was not with the people? Because they were in shame. When the glory of God comes upon your life, when it shines upon you, there's no more shame. Because his glory, his glory brings forth everything beautiful. His glory brings forth resources. His glory brings forth healing. His glory brings forth joy. His glory is his presence. And when God's presence is among his people, there is a separation there is a separation it's like whoa i don't know this girl her ministry the healing prophecy lord i know he there because you can tell his presence is among it no room for shame and so understanding the assignment so the first thing was Nehemiah had to understand what does the wall symbolize? What does this mean? And so how does this correlate for you? Because you're like, Sunray, this sounds amazing to hear about it for Nehemiah. But how does this relate to me? How this relates to you is God is giving you a wall, right? We figured that out. Everybody got a wall. God called them to build. But you have to understand what your wall signifies. When you understand what your wall signifies, then you're able to create, then you're able to create it in a way that satisfies God's plan. So, for example, let's do this. Let's say that um, somebody on here, let's say that you had a situation in life. OK, I'm going to use me as an example. So let's say I had. um Okay, Horandi, uh, I feel the glory of God. Who I feel the glory. I can't even think straight. Jesus, who hallelujah. So look, growing up, hallelujah, who's the glory? Jesus, hmm, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. So look, growing up, I was a, uh, what people would call um, a poor kid, right? Okay. And so what came with that was that when you notice ki like kids, especially like black kids in certain communities. Now, I'm not saying that it's only black kids, but please flow with me. I'm using me as an example. We didn't have access to certain resources. Right. OK, boom. And I noticed this. OK, I'm going off track. We didn't have access to certain resources. Boom. So in because of the experiences that I've had in my life, God has created a passion in my heart to create something, let's say, for kids to have access to resources. So right now we have the cry. So that cry, because I'm seeing kids that are super smart have to go to community colleges because they didn't have certain access to resources to qualify for better testing or to do this. Or I'm seeing kids that should be doctors become drug dealers. I'm seeing kids that should be scientists in our next neurologist literally becoming drug dealers or basketball players or or just going to do rap music ain't nothing wrong with that but if that's not your call there's something wrong with that amen and all because of lack of resources so now my heart is grieved i'm nehemiah i'm crying out to god 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 what is going on why are these children without resources blah 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 ah, so now the burden now the baby is being formed in me and as the baby is being formed in me god says daughter i want you to create a nonprofit organization and this nonprofit organization is not just going to be for the kids to get them to college it's going to be to expose the youth to science at an early age it's going to be to expose them to different workshops and to expose them to coding and all different types so that you can begin to show them the different things that they can do hallelujah elevation begins with exposure and so as the Lord begins releasing this blueprint to me it's gonna be caught this is gonna be looking this I'm gonna do this he's like I need you to go here I need you to go talk to these people so he's bringing the pieces together and eventually that thing becomes actualized I give birth to it and that's the wall I begin building the wall. I begin hiring people to say, hey, I need an HR person over this. I need somebody to go recruit kids. I need somebody that's in the public school system that can identify gifted kids that just don't have the money. Do you see what I'm saying? How I took a cry, how I took my life experience and created something to help the other kids to help them to help that cry okay so again 
started with my experiences, a cry. It became a burden on my heart. I went to God in prayer. Like Nehemiah, the Lord began to reveal to me how that baby is supposed to be formed, how that baby is supposed to be made. And now I'm creating a bridge, as someone just said. Now I'm creating a bridge. I'm bridging the gap. I'm bridging the disparity that exists for the black and brown children to now be able to cross over to become that neurologist, to now cross over to decide. Hey, I want to go into toxic pharmacology. Hey, actually, Sunray, you know, I enjoyed your science program, but I decided I want to become a corporate lawyer. It does not matter. What happens is, is that with, through that exposure to those babies, those babies now have an opportunity to become who God has called them to be. They're not, they're not only focused on drug dealers and rappers and all of these things that they see in their community, but they're seeing greater. Hallelujah. And when you see greater, you can seize greater hallelujah thank you lord and so that is the wall right but the thing is is that it takes time to plan this thing so understanding the assignment is you first need to understand what the wall is so do y'all see how I understood what the wall is? The wall for me in that situation is to create a nonprofit organization that exposes minority black and brown youth from the ages of five to the ages of 18 to different forms of science so that they can know that there's greater uh, that there's greater things to do beyond just doing the basic stuff or going to school for English or going to school to become a teacher. They can actually be a scientist. They can actually do world will now research they can actually change things right so now i know my wall I know what my wall symbolizes. My wall symbolizes raising up black and brown children to be able to see the world and work in a different way. Hallelujah. But it takes time to plan that. And so another part of understanding your assignment, you don't just need to know what the wall is. You don't just need to know the purpose of the wall, but you have to take time to plan. And how do you take time to plan? You plan through prayer. That's what Nehemiah taught us. Look, he found out about the wall being in ruins in the month of Kislev. But it wasn't until the month of Nisan, that's four months later, that he went before the king. And notice when he went before the king, he knew the time frame. He knew exactly what it was that he needed. And so it is through the place of prayer. Will you receive clarity, guidance and wisdom for the assignment? You see, we live in a popcorn generation. I've been guilty of it. The Lord gives you a great vision and you try and shake it up and throw it in a pop and throw it in the oven just to have a quick popcorn. But then what ends up happening is as quick as you formed it is as quick as it deteriorates. See, when the Lord gives you something, you have to understand, God, this is big. This deals with the call on my life. You didn't just call me on earth to popcorn form an organization. You didn't just call me on the earth to popcorn form. Uh, an empire God it takes time and so Nehemiah understood that what the Lord was building would have a specific time and it was through prayer that this was released to him so you cannot be focused on quick solutions now there are some things God will give you and say hey you got to do it in like 10 minutes hey you got to do it in two weeks but what I'm speaking about is regardless of the time frame just making sure that you aren't rushing it you aren't rushing it. It's easy to rush and get instant gratification, but instant gratification leads to gr uh, quick deterioration. Hallelujah. And so not only did Nehemiah literally know the, not only did Nehemiah spend time in prayer, but he had a project deliverable. Excuse me. When I used to work um, in uh, industry, I used to work in uh, research, science research. You had to have a deliverable to give to your uh, to give to your uh, project lead. They will give you work and they'll be like, OK, when can you deliver this by? Because they wanted to know how fast you can work and how fast you can get it done. Amen. And so he had not only a project deliverable, but he knew what he needed. Look, let's read it. So he said, what are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven. He said, and I said to the king, if it pleases the king, hallelujah. Hold on. We're going to go fast forward. He said, 
2 and 7. And I said to the king, if it pleases the king, oh, hallelujah, I'm sorry. Let's go to 6. How long will you be gone and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. So some of you, the Lord has had you working on things behind the scenes and you have to take the work that you're doing behind the scenes seriously, because when the door opens, when you're standing before the person that has the checkbook, when you're standing bef before the people that have the doors to open, to make your vision happen, you need to know what you're talking about. You need to know what you need. Because when the door is open and you already have the plan, now you wrote the vision and made it plain. So what you can run with it. Amen. So you can move speedily to accomplish that which the Lord has done. So don't allow these quiet seasons where ain't nobody paying attention to you, your vision or your business slow you down. But instead, use it to be like, look, I already know what I need. I'm ready. And some of you may not have everything, but do everything that you can within the confinement, within the confines of what it is that you have. It says, so it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. And I said to the king, he said, if it pleases the king, let letters be given me to the governors of the province be beyond the river that they may let me pass through until I come to Judah. Now, look, if you read the book of Ezra, you find out that the province behind the river, those were the people who were slowing down the progression of rebuilding God's temple. So Nehemiah knew who his opposition would be. Who are the ops to your assignment and what do you need? What can you have in advance to bypass the ops? He knew he needed a letter that said, look, the king said this because what the people beyond the river was doing, they was going behind the people's back and saying, yeah, the people are trying to do this. They trying to do this. And so the king would literally stop their work. Oh, baby, you're not stopping us because I saw what it is that you do. I saw, I saw that some of the people in, in the church leadership are going to do X, Y, and Z. So I already crossed my T's and dotted my I's. You got to research what you're doing. It says in a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that is a deep revelation that I'm not getting into tonight because Asaph, that is deep, that he may give me timber to make beams. I could, I could literally do a whole teaching alone on two and eight, but I'm not tonight that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress of the temple and for the wall. So long story short, let me get what I need. He knew what he needed. So you got to take the time to plan. Okay. He did research on his ops. What can come up against you? Who can come up against you? And is it possible for you to already have something in your framework to combat it? Taking time to plan a part of planning is prayer, but also pray for favor because a lot of people got favor with God, but dude, you don't have no favor with man. So your vision remain in heaven. Man has to be God. You have to have favor with man. And how do you get favor with man? Be likable. It's so many people like, oh, I don't got to do this. All I got is God. All I got is God. Well, let me tell you, the Lord blesses you through people. So as long as you are me, to people as long as you aren't likable to people your blessings will remain in heaven i'm trying to tell you and you got to find a super obedient servant of god to bless you when it comes time to bless you they got like god i don't really like her but lord you told me to bless her so they only doing it out of obedience to god not because they like you and so that's when you get exactly what you prayed for but nothing more and i'm i'm telling you this you have to be likable you got to have favor with men. You have to have favor with men. I'm not saying that you got to be catering to people. No, but you have to be likable. You got to be, you got to be loving. You got to be, you got to be sweet. You got to be um, forgiving. You got to be compassionate. Be like Jesus. There are people that just won't like you, right? That's okay. But when you are walking in your calling, when you are showing the character of Jesus, I guarantee you, you'll have favor with man. I guarantee you. And so there are people. Hey, Kwana, there are people. That's my sister, y'all. There are people who will literally bless you beyond measure 
because they like you. Somebody said, basically carry the nine fruits of the spirit. Exactly. Be like Jesus. And I'm telling you this because I love you. You can be a person that does not talk to people in your personal time. It just be you and God. But when you walk out and you have such a likable spirit, it's like people think that you friends with everybody. But really, it's your spirit. Hallelujah. And so another thing that's important for you to do when it comes time to understand your assignment is you have to research the land, your target group. Who are you building for? Now, when you build a business plan, everybody talks about this. Who is your target audience? Because although realistically you want to help the whole world, you're not going to be able to help the whole world. I had to realize that there are some things that I can do, but that God did not call me to do. A lot of people ask me, hey, Sunray, can you do prayer? Can you do a prayer time? Can you? I can pray. OK, and I can pray for you. But God did not call me to uh, to construct a prayer ministry. So I'm not going to be on here con- doing a prayer line because everybody else doing a prayer line. That's not what God told me to do. Could I do it? Yes. Would God be pleased if I do it? Yes. But that is the definition of a good thing and not a God thing. Because God didn't call me to do that. But I'll definitely get on here and worship with you. I worship. I'll sing. I'll sing you to his presence. I, I will. I will. I will. Hence us having worship daily. Okay. Make sure you guys subscribe to Sunray Worships. Just a quick plug. And so, hold on. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Sit your butt down. Sit down. That's what I thought. Continuing on. So, um, one thing that really spoke to me is if we read Nehemiah 2.14, it says... Then I went on to the fountain gate into the king's pool. He said, but there was no room for the animal that was under me to pass. And so when we study Nehemiah, we realize when he went to go inspect the land, there came a point where the baggage had to go. Okay, the baggage had to go. And so when we look at Nehemiah, one thing we can learn, there are times when there are things that God will have you take with you to inspect or to go about your journey and there's sometimes he will have you let those things go just so you can go deeper to see more of your call to see more of your assignment the equivalent to what that is is where it says the camel is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God why is that because the needle was for the camel to go through but in order for the camel to go through the needle it had to remove every Everything that it was carrying on it. There are some seasons in your life where God will literally strip you. And it is so you can go through that needle. So you can go through to get clearer instructions. So you can go through and see deeper. Because sometimes when you have too many material possessions. Or too many certain people. Or too many things with you. It it inhibits your ability to see clearly. See Nehemiah was going out to inspect what he needed to build. So God already gave him the vision. God was already speaking to him God had already let him know what he needed but he still needed to go up close to it he still needed to see it up close you see some of you the Lord he had you working these top jobs but then he stripped you away from it and he put you in a school with a kid and you're like God why you got me in school working with these kids but God had to strip off that job strip off all the riches and wealth off of you and he had to put you in a lower place he had to put you closer to the very kids that he has called you to actually serve he removed moved from you the idea of serving mammon so that he could put you in a place to serve his purpose and serve his kingdom so sometimes nehemiah taught us you got to strip off the excess baggage god has to remove all the things that you thought you were and what you thought you wanted to show you exactly who it is that he needed you to be amen and so let's go over some uh, questions for understanding the assignment now, this is a lot of questions, okay, um, because it all depends on what your project is. But this is just to get you started. So um, just to give you guys an overview, we talked about the wall symbolism. So what is your wall? What does it symbolize? And you got to take the time to plan it. Boom. So let's talk about 
what time is it oh it's already six almost six thirty we gotta get going so excuse me so first things first is what is your wall what has god called you to build okay point blank period what has god called you to build who is this building going to affect okay so who is your target audience all right um for example some of y'all god has called you to uh, start a prayer ministry so god has called you to build a prayer ministry what is the purpose of that wall okay and so what group has god called you to build for so who is this building going to affect that's the second question who is this prayer ministry going to affect is it going to be a prayer ministry for women is it just going to be a generic prayer ministry is it going to be a prayer ministry for family restoration is it going to be what is the prayer ministry for three whose help and counsel do you need there are some people that you can reveal the vision that God placed in your heart to because you need their wise counsel. So then you can literally reveal to these people. But who are those people whose help and whose counsel do you need Four. what provision do you need? I know you lying. Get in here now. Now, Jay. Get over here. Sit down. Go. Sit down. You got your nerves. What bills do you pay around here? What provision do you need? Okay. Five. Where is this happening? Okay. Where is it happening? Is it happening online? Are you doing something in person? Is it like you just walking around? Are you traveling countries? Where? Nehemiah knew where, but some of us don't even know where. Okay. How? How are you going to do it? How are you going to do the prayer ministry? Are you going to do conferencecall.com? Are you going to do Zoom call? Do you want to see people's faces? Do you want to hear people breathing over the phone? How, how are you going to do it? What's the cost estimate? How much is it going to cost you? Is it going to cost anything at all? Can you do a low cost structure? Can you do something where you just literally go to people's houses and you just pray? I don't know. You know. God knows. Seven. That's the cost estimate, right? Seven is the cost estimate, um, Sadie. And then eight. Is it a one time thing or is it continuous? These are questions to help you understand the assignment. Okay. I love my I love my moderators. Amen. And then number eight is one time and continuous. And so that's for understanding the assignment. Now, these points right here, I'm going to shoot through. them. Okay, so let's talk about some essential lessons when it comes to the apostolic call or essential lessons when it comes to building something for God. First things first, keep what God has placed on your heart between you and God. Only reveal to wise counsel and those who will help with building. Everybody don't need to know what you're doing, okay? They'll see it when you do it. Some people's input will turn into part of your output, and now they done tainted what the Lord purified when he put it in your heart, okay? So first things first, keep what God placed on your heart, on your heart. Nehemiah 2 and 12. Create a focus chamber mindset. I like this. The Holy Spirit said focus chamber mindset. So what this is, you set your main priority on finishing the work. So pretty much when hoorah rah and all these people start showing up, do not come down from doing the work that you're doing to go see about something petty. For example, it be people popping off in comments, okay? And if I literally took time to pop back at people, oh, you can't have nails. Oh, you can't do that. All, all the little stupid stuff they be saying because it's stupid. I'm going to call it stupid because it's stupid, okay? All the things that they be talking about are distractions. If I were to come down and address every person, I would be wasting my time and I would be removing the focus from what really matters, which is the work of God, which is releasing the glory of God, which is releasing his word, releasing his teachings. 
And so I've even seen some of y'all probably get caught up with these people in the comments. Please, just people, look, like I said a few, probably like like two years ago, the people that be popping off in the comments wouldn't dare pop off in my face, period. Because I stand on my father's business, okay? And so we got to understand, when it comes to this online world, people get, they get Twitter fingers, okay? They start typing and doing all of this stuff that they would never say in person, okay? And even if they were to say it in person, guess what? We turn the other cheek. (laughs) And then when they do that cheek, I got another cheek. I got another cheek. Ah, Period. You get what I'm saying? Like, don't pay them no attention. (sighs) So that represents people in your life that be talking crazy. Your auntie, your uncle, shoot your daddy, your mama, like all of them. They can get the cheek too. Okay. Baby, I'm building for the Lord. Third thing. Build a hedge of protection with prayer. Okay. So you need to pray against your ops. You need to pray for strategy to overcome. You need to pray to complete it. You need to pray for the people involved. You need unity. You need to pray for unity over confusion. You need to pray that people have courage over fear. Okay. You need to pray that you get it done on time. Pray, 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 pray. Everything you got to pray over Hallelujah. That's another essential lesson me and my daughters. Another essential lesson. It be your own people that turn against you. Keep building anyways. Don't allow bitterness to tank God's vision. Some of y'all done did stuff. You like, none of my family members support me. It's your family members. God, if God wanted you to build it for your family members, he would have had you build it for your family members. But clearly, he ain't tell your family members. He told you and he wants you to do it for other people. Don't be upset when people don't support you or when people be talking crazy against you. I don't even think I know my sister watch all my videos, but I don't even think most of my adopted family even care to know what I'm doing right now. And do I care? (laughs) No, because at the end of the day, guess what? What I built ain't for them. Now, if they want to use it, it's okay, but it's really for y'all. God called me to y'all. So I'm not going to stress out that they not supporting me. Okay. Because it ain't for them. Period. I ain't going to allow bitterness to taint what I'm trying to give y'all. I love them. I love my family. Don't get me wrong. Even though I don't talk to them at all. But I love them. Okay. But. (laughs) Y'all think I'm playing, but I'm really serious. I don't really talk to them. But it ain't no bitterness there. It's an understanding. Okay. What I'm building is for y'all. Okay. And so another thing, Nehemiah 5 teaches us this. Oh, I ain't been telling y'all the scriptures. It's your own people. Nehemiah 4, 10 through 12. Okay. Nehemiah 5. As you build, life will happen. Okay. So always seek God for solutions, but keep God's vision in mind. Okay. As you build, God may have you sacrifice greatly. This is also in Nehemiah 5. And so one thing that you notice about Nehemiah was that he was a governor and the governor was allotted a certain portion. Right. And so instead of taking a certain portion, he actually gave more than he received. As you build, God will have a lot of you sacrifice greatly. For example, God still has me doing ministry. And look, Lord, I still need a a home. I still need a car. I still need these things. I still need stability. Okay, God. But the Lord will have you sacrifice greatly as you're building. And why does God have you sacrifice greatly as you're building? Because he's trying to teach you to keep a servant's heart. Because imagine if I had everything in my life figured out, like the house, the car, the this, the that, husband, kids, blah, 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 all of that. Not saying that God would not test me in other ways. It's just that the Lord allows certain situations and circumstances to test your heart. Because even those people that have everything better believe behind the scenes, God has them sowing thousands. God has them opening up rooms in their home. God, God is testing them in other ways because he always wants to make sure that you are a servant and you aren't self-serving. Okay. So sacrifice teaches you how to serve. Okay. Continuously. Okay, don't ever get too comfortable. You will be sacrificing your whole life. Okay, period. 
So another thing um, about Nehemiah, don't entertain pointless noise and chatter. Like I said, let them clap off in the comments of your life, but let them see the trailer <laughs> of what the Lord is doing through you. Amen. So we already talked about that. Exercise discernment. This is a big one. So if you read Nehemiah 6, not only did they hire people to come against him, but there were even prophets and prophetesses that wanted to stop his work. Everybody that says they're a prophet or a prophetess of the Lord and says they have a word for you concerning something God told you in your heart is not coming from God. Okay? Okay? Everybody that say they for you ain't really for you. And I got to tell you this in your ear because you think everybody that say I'm a prophet and God told me to tell you not to do that. You trust they wisdom over your own wisdom and God gave you the dream. How that works away? I'm just saying, like, look, I ain't saying God can't send people in to give you wise counsel. But what I'm saying is everybody that say they helping you is not helping you. Some people literally go read the old prophet and young prophet. There it go. I think that's second Kings 13 or first Kings 13 is one of them. Oh, Jesus. Whew. Okay. Last thing. And we finally done. Let the work speak. Let the work speak. If I was to listen to every person that has something to say about what I would do, I would literally never get done what God needed me to get done. How do you know that you did what you were supposed to do? Because the presence of God will rest on what you've done. Do they do they feel the presence? Do y'all feel the presence of God here? Okay. So while they sitting there, they can't deny that once the work was complete, the presence of the Lord was all on it. And God ain't gonna be on nothing that he don't approve. Hallelujah. Makes sense. Alright, family. Whew. I'm so happy I'm done with that. Father, we worship you. So we're just going to have Sister Sadie put the information for people who want to sow. Oh, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Oh, we in good time. And it's 634. Father, we worship you. My little sister texts me. Father, we worship you. Just so you guys know, encounter nights are always posted and left up, okay? Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Sister Shelby says, why can you not tell people your spirit name? Look, you can tell people your spirit name. Go ahead. That's perfectly fine. You can tell people your, your spiritual name. Ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just personally, y'all will never know my spiritual name because it reveals something. Like, that's just like telling somebody, oh, here go all my cards. I'm just going to show you all my cards. Now, now, people that got eyes to see, they already know who you are in the spirit. They already people that got that God gave eyes to see like a lot of y'all probably already know who God truly called me to be. Some of y'all probably already know y'all just can't say. OK, but just just let your life speak. Let your life reveal. You ain't got to confirm. You ain't got to deny nothing. Like it's clear that I operate as an apostle. It's clear that ain't that ain't nothing that's hidden. That ain't nothing that's hidden. It's clear. But there are things. There's like people like, oh yeah, I know that. Don't tell people you got the apostle. No, literally. That's clear. If you got a brain, you can see that. Okay, you don't even have to have, you don't even got to know God that much to see it, right? But there is something that God has just for me in heaven that nobody will ever know about but my husband, but my mama, and the people that need to know. And that's about it, which is God, my mama, and my husband. 
and maybe my kids. But the rest of y'all and Jade know. But the rest of y'all, y'all don't need to know that. that that's so ain't nothing wrong with it. You can tell people. But like people said, there's a whole lot of stuff that go on with that. Oh, Jesus, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. Thank you, Lord. Father, we worship you. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. And so, um, oh yeah, no problem. But I want to, um, also say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. For those people, um, who, uh, hallelujah, I should have been said this before y'all sold or whatever, but the Lord placed the number 12 on my heart. Because the number 12 actually deals with the apostolic. It deals with governmental authority. It deals with the um, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It deals with order. And so if you are led to sow, you can put the number 12 in there somewhere. $12, $120, 12 multiplied, $1,200, what? <laughs> $12,000. I'm just kidding. But whatever God put on your heart, look, put 12K up in here. Y'all ain't going to never see me on here ever again. Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I promise you. <laughs> People probably be like, think I'm serious, but no, it's just jokes. But um, hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Y'all going to be like, damn, where where Sunray go? And so, yeah, you can sow whenever it is that the Lord leads you to sow. Do not feel led to sow, okay? Whatever it is God places on your heart, put it into the storehouse. And know that the I pronounce a blessing of Malachi 310 over everybody's seed that you sow into this storehouse, that you sow into this ministry. And the Lord will bless you abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, um. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And and if somebody sold a dollar and 20 cent, that is, that's, that's good. There were times where I could literally only sell a dollar or two dollars. Amen. But I made sure I never came into the presence of God empty handed. Amen. I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do this. And even sometimes, because, you know, uh, Cash App have it where you can do overdraft. I remember one time I went to church and I literally gave overdraft. Because <laughs> I was like, look, Lord, I'm giving to you. Because I understand. And this is for me. This is a revelation God gave me. I don't want to go into God's house empty handed. So if I receive something and it nourished me and it helped me and I can help somebody else, it's like, heck yeah, I'll sow into you. Heck yeah, I'll do this. You get what I'm saying? Especially for the church and whatever God calls you to do. Hallelujah. But again, this is not no uh, dissertation. This ain't no, um, this ain't nothing to try and make you sow. No, Mm -mm. it's only if you, I like cheerful givers. Okay. I ain't trying to fight with y'all seeds because y'all holding on to them in the spirit realm. When you sow into this ministry, let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let it go. <laughs> ah, God is so good. And so if this teaching blessed you today, can I get you to not only like the video, but also just share some sentiments below? Hallelujah. <laughs> no, sis, for real. Hallelujah. Oh, God's presence is so heavy in here. Father, we worship you, hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. I'm so happy that they help y'all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. God, we worship you. The person that said their name um, means uh, righteousness. So you've made me dig deeper with God. Study the 18th Hebrew letter Zadik. I'm mispronouncing it. But you need to study the 18th Hebrew letter Zadik. And you also need to do a deeper dive into understanding trees. Because the Lord revealed to you about your life and dealing with righteousness. You need to understand that as a tree, you're a planting of the Lord. But also more importantly... 
you're going to want to understand how the Lord will use that to help people in this earth. The fact that your name means righteousness. Hallelujah. You probably experience a lot of wickedness in your life. So I would say do a deep dive into the number, the 18th Hebrew letter, and then also um, do research into trees. And I'm talking about not just biblical research, but also plant based research so you can understand. God will give you great revelation about that. Hallelujah. I just felt led to share that wisdom with you. Hallelujah. Your obedience and help my breakthrough. Come on, Lord. Come, Lord. Come on, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are so welcome, Courtney. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And so someone said their name means morning star. And so I'm sure you probably already did this research. We know who morning star is, but just think about the star. <laughs> when you think about the star, what that deals with, hallelujah, is, you know, um, just just begin to look at the significance of what a star is. A star is, is put into a dark place to shine brightly and to guide and to direct it brings um it brings clarity it brings it brings forth comfort hallelujah in a dark night and so even when you look at your life hallelujah and you look at this meaning of a star you can begin to understand why you're called to the darkness why a lot of dark things have happened to you but it is so the lord could teach you that you're a star and a star shines bright in the darkness hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 harandi arabasi, hallelujah. Who Jesus, who Lord, hallelujah. God's abundance. Mm, y'all got some interesting names. If I, if y'all comment something and I think of something, or not think of something, and the Lord brings forth wisdom, then I'll say it. But um, other than that, I, I can't. I was gonna. Say, I can't go beyond that. Yes, um, I do have Cash App. Um, uh, Sadie, can you comment the Cash App again, please? The Cash App and the PayPal for people. Come on, Nehemiah. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm drunk in the glory of God. I'm probably about to lay down on the floor for a good 15, 20 minutes. Who Jesus. Amen. Ooh, the palm tree is good. I ain't gonna say nothing about it. But the palm tree is good. Hey, thank you, Mercy. Bringer of light. Oh, that's good. Amber, a tree resin. But you can also look at amber as well as when you go through the fire metal, it glows like amber. Um, I don't have my phone. The phone that y'all are on right now has um, cash apps. So I'll uh, be able to accept any pending cash apps after when I go through and do the financials. Amen. And so if it says pending, you send it to the right place. It's just I got to accept it. But it's on the phone that y'all own, so I can only do so much. Sadie, your name means princess. Look into Sarah. Sarah's name meant princess. But her name was first Sarai. So do some research in Sarai and Sarah. Because the Lord said, I take the barren woman and I make her into a princess. And that was Sarah. And for people that keep saying they name me beloved, look at David. David was the beloved of the Lord. So look at the life of David. You'll get some revelation from there. Who Jesus. Who Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So the person that says their name is Cassia, you need to do some research into the... Um, where is all this wisdom coming from? You need to do some research into the, the instruments of God's temple. Because if I remember correctly, the Cassia bark or something like that, I think Cassia also comes from the Acacia family of like trees and whatnot. So you need to do some research into the articles of God's temple. Hallelujah. It'll give you revelation about your life. Hmm. 
Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Y'all, I feel the glory of the Lord. Jesus. And Morningstar was Lucifer, yes, but now it's you. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I just needed to laugh. Jesus, hallelujah. Okay, you guys, I have to get into God's presence. So I love you all so much. And I pray that this teaching has blessed you. Definitely share it with some friends. Um, go ahead and like the video. It's like 300 and some of y'all. And yeah, hold on. I got to answer my cousin question while I'm on here. My cousin said, you think, dang, you think you can ha have one name in one season to be somebody else in the other. Yeah, the Lord could literally be using, he could be revealing to you the different mantles on your life. Every season that you're in is preparing you for something. And so I know for me, <clears throat> God has had me go through multiple different seasons and he's revealed different names or different anointings. But it was all preparation, right? And so, um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo, 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 woo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so, um, whoo, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I got to get off here, y'all. The glory is so heavy. God is calling me into his presence. Let me be refilled. Okay. Because I feel like I just poured out a whole life ton of things. I really didn't. But, you know. His, his glory is just so heavy on me, y'all. I love y'all so much. And I pray that it helps you um, all just, you know, do what y'all got to do. I pray that y'all build. Okay. Build what God has called y'all to build. Um, yeah. Okay. Again, sewing information. Can you put it up one more time for me, Sadie? And then I'm going to get up off here. Oh, Randi Arabasaya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Elaine. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You guys are so welcome. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You are so welcome, Joanna. Hallelujah. Your name means God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's okay, Sadie. And so, again, any other sewing information y'all need, y'all can just click on the comments or click in the description box or go to the website. It's all there. And so, I love you all so much. And I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Bye.